In my review of the Garden of Evil, I said that it's a good example of how to make an interesting monster and that I would like to at least try to rework some of my D&D monster conversions to make them less D&D and more GURPS. I don't want to just talk about mechanics here, but also cover lore, tactics and how the GM can use the monster. I'm going to use the information from all D&D editions and add or remove what I want. I'm not going to stick 100% to the source material. So this is my first attempt, and if this video performs well, I might make it a series. I rolled a monster randomly from the list and got the Coatl. So who are the Coatls? Coatls are large serpentine beings with rainbow-colored feathered wings. They serve as benevolent divine guardians of forgotten temples deep in the jungles. Some coatls are devoted to deities that have been forgotten millennia ago, and some become the objects of worship by the humanoid tribes of the jungles. While they are unable to grant divine powers, some rare warlocks are able to forge a pact with a coatl and become a so-called rainbow servant with powers that differ from the typical Finnish warlocks. The coatls themselves have a patron deity too, Jazirian, Jazirian is a lawful good deity of community, peace, learning and parenthood. While this deity might seem like a minor power, there aren't many coatls in the world after all, it's actually a greater deity that played a crucial role in the creation of the universe, shaping it from the primordial chaos alongside Ariman, another serpent god whose nature is much more mysterious. Coatls possess both magical and psionic abilities, that help them stay hidden, sense evil and destroy it. They are poisonous and if their venom is milked and purified, it can be turned into potent ravage that is especially effective against unholy beings. Let's start with the body chassis. I'll be working in GCS just so I can import the sheet later in Foundry. This is what I have before, with some slight adjustments. The Coatl is a size modifier plus 2 creature with high intelligence right over the bat. It has a thick scale armor, fangs, a vermiform body and wings. Infravision, while overused in D&D in my opinion, works well for a serpentine monster, so I will keep it. I also gave the Coatl two levels of nictitating membrane to make it less vulnerable to eye hits. Since it's a serpent, it obviously has no manipulators, double jointed and constriction attack, and also no legs slithers. So what else should it have? Snakes typically have a cute taste and smell and are good at swimming. So let's add three levels of acute taste and smell and uh, amphibious. Done. Many snakes have breath holding, but the D&D 5e monster manual states that the coatls can survive without air in general. Let's find the middle ground and add doesn't breathe with oxygen storage. 200 times as long as normal. That should work. The art also suggests that it should have peripheral vision. So let's add that. Uh, it's a snake after all. Let's give it cold blooded. Under 50 degrees. Snakes usually have reduced consumption. For example, Gerst's Animalia gives the Viper three levels of reduced con consumption. Some cattle descriptions say that they do not need to eat at all, and some say that they eat normally and are carnivores. So let's find the middle ground again. I suggest. Uh, giving it reduced consumption 4, so they barely need to eat, and also restricted diet to make them carnivores. That's a very common carnivore. Ok, done. Snakes also have no trouble moving across uneven or slippery surfaces, so let's give them terrain adaptation slippery and terrain adaptation uneven. Done. Finally, let's add poison. 
This is nothing too strong, but something that adds a little more punch to the fangs. Speaking of fangs, I also decided to give uh, this quartal two levels of born biter to make it better at biting. Now the cattles are set to live very long, as they play the role of guardians placed by ancient deities, but they still die of old age, so let's give them extended lifespan 5. Uh, that should make them very long lived, but also let's give them early maturation 4. Uh, this is a trait from template toolkit. Uh, that's not the right one. This is the one that's a free trait. Uh, four levels of it. So that works. I think that since they are guardian creatures, I should give them less sleep. Doesn't sleep sounds too extreme, right? I'll give them less sleep for. Yes, that should work. Then we have to address the supernatural abilities. The D&D Coartal has both divine spellcasting, magical abilities and psionics. I think that the innate divine spellcasting is dumb, so I just remove it. In my first version of this monster, I just replaced it with Sorcerer's Empowerment, limited to the Air College. But now I would like to rework it as spell-like abilities, alternative abilities that use pre-written spells. This will make it much easier to actually use the monster. The first ability that sometimes appears on the monster start block is Ethereal Jaunt, equivalent to the personal Ethereal Body spell in GURPS. I do not know if there is any real world myth justification for this, but I would rather remove it. The less I have to deal with insubstantiality, the better. Polymorph is also something that I would like to remove. Let's just disregard the suggested D&D spells and think about the main idea of the Coatl. It's a flying guardian serpent that is often associated with the sky, holiness and a rainbow. So first let's add Seek Evil. That's, that seems appropriate, right? While I usually reserve this spell to divine spellcasters, I often make exceptions for spell-like abilities that are part of a creature's racial template. This is a creature of pure air, so let's add Purify Air too. Enveloping Winds is a flavorful defensive spell that could protect against ranged weapons of the primitive jungle tribes. The Coatl protects temples against evil, and evil spirits are a thing. To combat such traits, let's add Personal Effect Spirits. Continual Light and Colors mm, seem like appropriate spells for thematic reasons. I can imagine people who worship the cattle or whom the cattle guards, bringing it items to bless with continual light. It could have entire villages lit up with this spell. This both makes for a nice visual, makes it easier to spot dangers, makes logistics easier and also lets you avoid torches that can be dangerous in the jungle. What about any attack spells? I think it's as good of a chance as any to use the prismatic attack. That's a custom innate attack made to represent various prismatic uh, spells or effects uh, that you can find in D&D that have a random damage type. So I will use the prismatic jet 2 spell, because I think it works fine. But by default it uses innate attack beam and in the Coatl has no arms to speak of, uh, it will use innate attack breath instead. That's a free feature, because why not? This will give the Coatl a unique attack that the players probably have never seen before, and that's nice. Let's also add color spray as a non-lethal application of light. This is nonetheless very useful in combat. I'm intentionally trying to avoid lightning spells because I'm trying to capitalize on the theme of light and air, not electricity. And finally, let's give it detect magic because why not? Now, they also have psionic abilities. And I do not really want to remove them, as they will really make this a unique creature. The abilities that I decided to give the cattle are. 
see sense to to sense any psionic activity telespeak for to be able to converse with the locals and slash or intruders mind shield to to resist mental intrusions and become aware of them and mind clouding to to stay hidden personally i restrict telepathic abilities so that they only affect sapient creatures that is creatures with iq6 or higher this way telespeak and mind clouding are a bit cheaper than usual but that's not all I would like to add some magical abilities that are not part of the alternative abilities array and I want them to be separate and if applicable constantly active. I would also like to add some more mundane traits. For example, I think protected vision is very appropriate here. Then a couple of levels of temperature tolerance, hot, it lives in the jungles after all. Now I have another idea to reinforce the archetype of a jungle quasi-deity. How about it we make the following ability, Sun O. The Coatl can spread its rainbow-colored wings as a ready maneuver to create brilliant patterns around him when in direct sunlight, and anyone who observes this must roll a fright check at minus 3 using the variant O table from Girl's Powers. This is a quite powerful ability, but one that can be useful only in certain situations. It is both flavorful, mechanically interesting, because all checks are quite rare, and creates some consideration in terms of strategy. Should the party attack at night when the Coatl cannot use this ability, but they probably have impaired vision? Or should they attack during the day? I should also add a non-detection ability that is based on obscure. This one will make the Coatl invisible to divination magic and scrying, which definitely would help them stay hidden in the remote jungles. See invisible. Where is it? There it is. See invisible with a true sight enhancement is another very flavorful ability that the Coatl should have. As the Coatl has many magical abilities that require FP expenditure, let's also give it energy reserve 10. I also want to add truthfulness 6. The 5e monster manual says that they are unable to lie. Disadvantages such as obsession, protect a place, or sense of duty are optional, but should often be had by the coatles. Now, at last, the racial template is done, but let's also add some skills. Brawling and wrestling are obvious combat skills. Innate attack breath is required for the prismatic jet spell. Diplomacy, observation, stealth, and detect lies sound appropriate for a sacred guardian. Area knowledge, survival jungle, and swimming are something that one will develop in the jungles. Theology and religious ritual for Jezirian, the racial deity of the Coatles, seem appropriate. Aerobatics is needed for complex aerial maneuvers. And thaumatology is a good knowledge skill for such magical creatures. Okay, it's done. You can use a coatl in your game now, but there might be some rules that you'd want to familiarize yourself with first. First of all, they have fangs and born biter, so I suggest you to read the teeth box from GURPS Martial Arts. The coatl is quite big, so overrun, trample and slam rules become very relevant. They can also fly, so you better read flying combat. Finally, if you have the Serpents of Legend book, read page 8. This one has rules for the turret mode and the vermiform posture. You will not find them anywhere else, but they make snakes really feel like snakes. So how will a coatl fight? The coatl is a smart creature, so it will exploit any weaknesses it can find, use terrain advantage and try to attack the most dangerous or vulnerable foes first. It is also a flyer that is somewhat decent at stealth due to the mind clouding ability. It could ambush the enemy, snatch for example a wizard with its fangs, and just fly up then drop him down. Alternatively, it could grapple a vulnerable enemy, enter turret defense mode, and lash out with its fangs while constricting the grappled victim. Since it is a size modifier plus 2 creature, it can overrun and trample many enemies at once. If the enemies have next to no ranged weapons, 
Then the quadruped could just fly a few yards from the ground and exploit the long reach of the prismatic jet. Generally speaking, it should open a fight with, by casting Color Spray to try to stun and or blind as many enemies as possible and only then attempt a grapple. The Quattle also has weaknesses. The first one is that it does not have arms or weapons. When fighting armed enemies, it should be very careful because armed parries hurt. Fortunately, stun from Color Spray can help with that. Strong ranged weapons also can hurt the Koatl a lot, as enveloping winds cannot really protect from something like a decently strong crossbow or a firearm. The Koatl also has no magic resistance, and its health is not high, so you want to assault this monster with magic and try to target its health. The Koatl, however, is mostly a benevolent being. If you do not disturb the place it is guarding, then you probably will not even have to fight it. It serves as a good, friendly NPC that can give quests, instead of being a subject of a quest. On the other hand, as a GM you could concoct a situation where the PCs have to find an ancient relic in a temple that is guarded by a coatl or several of them. The guardian coatl will not care if this relic is needed to win a war somewhere far away, it will not let the PCs in without a fight, and if you hurt or kill the coatl, you might anger the tribe of natives that live around the temple. So this monster is not very flexible, but the situation is not so bad. A slain coatl can be a source of some interesting loot, as I mentioned before, its poison can be harvested and optionally purified to produce a ravage, a special poison that affects even demons who are immune to poisons normally. The scaly hide of a coatl can be made into armor, and rainbow-colored feathers could be used as optional material components for air spells or prismatic spells, or incorporated into enchanted items that produce similar effects. And that's it! If you enjoy this type of content, make sure to either like or comment or both, and if you want me to cover some other monster in such detail, feel free to give me suggestions. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time!